Hey everyone, welcome back to our last build episode with our 8XT. Uh, now this one's not really a build episode, this is kind of a video chat. Uh, we've got a fresh OS engine here, this is the 82 or Adam Drake 2 edition engine. This is a 21 engine for our Truggy, and we've actually got Mr. Adam Drake on a Zoom call here. So we're going to go ahead and jump over there, talk to him a little bit about his engine break-in service and kind of the, the stuff Adam does with Nitro engines. All right, so hey everyone, we're here with the legend, Adam Drake. Uh, Adam, you wanna go ahead and kind of introduce yourself for people that don't know who you are, uh, kind of tell them what you do. Yeah, I'm Adam Drake. I've raced uh, for a number of years. Um, I think more of the kind of reason for this uh, video though is to talk a little bit about kind of, uh, I guess our side business that Rhonda and myself do with our engine services and engine break-ins. Um, but aside from that, um, as most of you would know, I've been a long, long-term racer and um, yeah, also been just, I guess, kind of known for engine tuning and runtime and things like that. So I guess a little bit of kind of like the engine guru in a sense. Yeah, definitely. So we're, we're definitely here to talk about your uh, engine break-in service. We have the 82 here, the OS 82. We sent this over to Adam and had him break it in. So Adam, can you kind of tell us, or at least tell us what you can about your kind of Drake-in service and what it does with the engine and how it helps the break-in process? Yeah, so originally when this started, I was looking for a way to kind of increase performance for my own engine program. And mm -hmm. I thought the EBIS method was very interesting. Um, there were a few things that I, I thought were concerns that I didn't think would be as good as the old fashioned or traditional break in method. So originally I bought a machine just to try it out, just purely for my own engines, Rhonda's engines, and, uh, you know, to see what I could learn with it and mm -hmm. if there was any advantages to it. And through the testing the biggest thing was just how much easier it made the break-in process, how much more enjoyable it was the first, um, kind of your first time that you hit the track. Right. And so I was, I was testing some different oils and, and kind of fine tuning the process. And I was doing engines for some of my buddies locally. And, and it was also allowing me to test some things myself and get feedback from them. So, a couple of them basically told me they were like, this is awesome. This, this makes the nitro experience so much easier. For you sure. need to start doing this. And one person in particular was my buddy, Shane Simmons. And he's like, I don't care what you charge. I'm never breaking in an engine the old fashioned way. You, you've got to do this. So it, it kind of like just sunk in with me. And I was like, you know what? Like if you talk to anyone who's new to nitro, they're like breaking in an engine is just a nightmare. It sucks. Right. You, you waste a lot of time fuel. It's, you know, the engine's getting stuck on the box and you're having to heat it up and all these things. So my main reason was if this can make nitro more enjoyable and easier for a new guy, they're going to stick with nitro longer. I mean, let's face it. They're, the reason I feel the popularity of electric is because it's, it's fairly easy, especially with brushless and lipo, you know, you, you just plug it in and go. So that's originally how it started, but there are also benefits to it aside from it, just making the experience easier. Um, there's a lot of stress that the connecting rod and the engine endures during a traditional break-in method because you're trying to run the engine very rich, which is putting a lot of fuel through it. Mm -hmm. That extra fuel is creating more pressure, which is putting more stress and load on the connecting rod. You're trying to keep the engine hot, but when it's rich, it's trying to be cooled. Right. So there is still a process. You, you do still have to preheat the engine. You do still have to take it a little bit easy um after our break-in method but it's not nearly as like tedious and you can go to the track the first day and you can have an enjoyable time at the track yeah idle will be more and more consistent you won't have the surging idle like you would with just a brand new super tight engine 
and um, it ends up making it easier on the engine to where you can get more performance and also more longevity out of the engine without causing additional stress to the connecting rod. So um, it's it's been really good. We have a ton of people um, all over the world. I mean, obviously in the US is where the majority of our business is, but we have guys that send us engines from all over the world nice. and um, have been really happy with the, with the service. Great. So the machine you were talking about earlier, what what is the machine? What does it kind of do for people that don't know what that is? Yeah, so the machine I use, there's there's a few different machines out there. Um, the machines that we use, uh, they're the actual like official EBIS machines, which stand for Easy Break-In System. Okay. Um, they're manufactured in Europe. And basically what it is, is a tank that the engine is the cooling head carburetor is partially disassembled, but internally piston sleeve, rod, crankshaft, case, mm -hmm. is submerged in oil. There is a, uh, you, instead of the standard head button, there's like a ring that basically uh, holds the sleeve in place so that as the engine is being run in um, or basically lapped in by an electric motor turning the crankshaft, yeah. it's able to release that extra pressure from the oil. So the oil is also heated, and then during the process, the RPM and also the temperature range uh, varies throughout the process. We also uh, basically run cycles through the machine to where it heat cycles, so it'll run for X amount of time at, at an RPM, the RPM adjusts, and then once it gets through that cycle, everything shut off, cooled, so everything can contract then reheated, run yep. through the next cycle. And then all engines are a little bit different. I mean, even if you you take, you know, five different 82s, there may be a slight difference in how tight it comes from the factory because there's tolerances with all this stuff. So for us, we don't have, we have a system, but it's, it varies depending on the engine for how long it may need to run on the machine. Typically, the process is like a 12-hour process of actually running on the machine. It's, it's really long. I think a lot of people are pretty shocked by that. Um, but for me, again, it's, it's, it's what has become kind of a side business for Ron and I. But ultimately, our goal with it is to give people a better experience with Nitro, to make it more uh, user-friendly and enjoyable, to where it makes it better for all the companies that I work for and sponsors because people are having more fun with nitro yeah. and I'm um, going to spend more time at the track. Yeah. I mean, it's a, essentially kind of bringing back the fun in nitro. I mean, the break in to certain people is kind of fun, you know, finding the right tune, but a lot of people out there just don't know how to do it correctly or they're just getting frustrated because it's just not ending up right. Yeah. And ultimately you can do a lot of damage and put wear and tear on the engine if it's, if it's not done right. And again, there is still a process when you get it back, but it's a much easier, more user-friendly process. We set the carburetor needles and there are a lot of variables depending on the fuel, the vehicle, where you live. Um, the tune will still need to be slightly adjusted, but with most engines, the way that it comes from the factory, the settings are so rich that it's hard to even get started because you're right. pumping so much fuel through it. So with any of the OS based engines and also the Nova based engines, cause I have a lot of experience with both of those, mm -hmm. um, the carburetors come set to where pretty much heat the engine up, start it up, you'll slightly adjust the idle and from there, you can start running it either in the street or on the track and you can go through our final process to get it to race tune. But it's, it's a really, really easy process uh, compared to doing it the old fashioned way. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, what would you say where the engine is like nicely broken in after the customer, you know, gets it back, puts a couple tanks through it. How many, how many gallons or how many quarts do you think that is? So it can vary depending on the fuel that you're using. Obviously some fuel is gonna kind of speed up the process more than others. So for me, 
typically what I'll like to do is I'll run through the little process. It's basically like four natural heat cycles. Mm -hmm. um, because even though it's been heat cycled when it's been run on the machine, the machine, everything is equal temperature because it's submerged in oil. When the engine runs naturally, it's not an equal temperature all the way around the sleeve. The exhaust port's hotter than the rest. So you need to run through those four heat cycles. Typically, I'll do anywhere from one to three tanks of fuel per heat cycle mm -hmm. um, for three to four cycles. Right. Um, I mean, if you absolutely had to and say, you know, you got in a jam and you're at a race and your engine blew up and you need to put a new one in that's been run through the pro through our process, you could put it in, heat cycle it once or twice, go out and run your qualifier. You're just going to need to be a little bit conservative on the high speed side. Mm -hmm. just want to make Keep sure. It a little rich. Yeah, that. So bottom and mid can be really crisp to where it still drives good around the track. You can still do all the jumps. It's just maybe going to be a little conservative on top. I feel like if I'm going to a major race, like I still would like to put a gallon on the engine mm -hmm. after the process to make sure it's everything's fully seated, fully broken in. And that's more because, you know, your engine is an investment. It's expensive. It's, it's yeah. the, most expensive thing aside from the vehicle itself so i'm just not really in a hurry to you know try to to get race tuned see what my maximum runtime is and stuff like that um, but again you could race with it very early on mm -hmm. you're just going to want to be conservative but um, i like to you know put a half a gallon through it of just you know on a practice day running at the track and then maybe do like a club race or a regional race where I'm putting another half a gallon on it. I'm able to uh, do some practice pit stops and make sure the idle and everything's good. Um, that's that's kind of how my process or program is um, from when it's new, broken in on the machine to uh, actually racing it. Nice, nice. All right, so like here in Illinois and you know the Midwest, we're coming up on winter. So say you've run an engine for a year, it's broken in. How would you take that engine apart or storage it for the winter time or if you're just not gonna run it for a while? So if everything's been running good, you've had no problems, you've run it all summer, engine's been perfect. I literally would just, I use a mix um, of Marvel's Mystery Oil and WD-40. So it's 80% okay. Marvel's Mystery Oil, 20% WD-40. I just pull the exhaust system off, pull the manifold off, and then in the exhaust port, I'll put six to eight drops of that solution, mm -hmm. and then put maybe two drops, remove the air filter, and put two drops in the carburetor, and then just kind of rock the engine back and forth, maybe turn it over a couple times, just so that oil can kind of get in and coat everything. If your engine has a lot of time towards the end of the summer. It's a little bit finicky and you don't want to start next year, not really knowing. My recommendation would be to send me the engine, have me inspect it. If needed, we can resize the piston and sleeve. Also, if needed, we can change the bearings, replace carburetor O-rings to where when you're ready to start next season, you're just fully confident, hey, the engine's been gone through, I'm ready. Like, if it's been resized, you may need to take it easy, run a couple tanks through it before your first race. But at least you then know to start the season, everything is good to go. Okay. But say if your engine, you only put four or five gallons on it, everything's been perfect. There's really not much that you need to do as far as, like, disassembling the engine and, and getting it ready for storage because a lot of times people will make mistakes like pulling the back plate off, the, not making sure that the piston's at top dead center, they'll yep. break the piston. There's really not much going on inside the engine. You know, there's, there's only a few moving parts. And the big thing is you're trying to make sure that none of those parts are going to be corroded or gummed up from sitting over the winter. So I think the biggest mistake people do is they run their last race, 
it's kind of like the season's over. They're tired. They're like, I'll get to it later, you know, and I'll yeah. clean up my car. I'll service it. I'm not going to run it for months, so I don't need to do anything. They put it to the side. And then in the winter months, it's when there's the chance of drawing in the most moisture. Yeah. The engine gets the, the oil from the fuel kind of gets gummed up. The bearings start to get a little bit of rust on them. And you can do a lot of damage to the engine. So my recommendation is if you're going to store your stuff, you know you're not going to run um, for the rest of the, the winter. Or, or this is even a good thing to do just from week to week is okay. to just put the six or eight drops of after run oil, roll the engine over, make sure it coats everything. And, um, you know, you should be ready to go for the next race. Nice. Nice. Now you, you talked about sending an engine in to get, you know, resized. Is that another service you offer and kind of what other stuff do you do with, with nitro engines? Yeah. So pretty much we do like full service for, for nitro engines. If it's, you know, bearing replacement, piston and sleeve resizing, uh, a blown up engine and you need a new piston sleeve and rod in it. Uh, pretty much, anything nitro engine to try to, you know, keep people up and running, extend the life of their engines or um, preventative maintenance. Um, we also have like a trade in program where guys can trade in old engines towards credit. Um, just, just anything that we can try to do to make the nitro experience more enjoyable, prolong the life of their engines and keep their engines running in, uh, you know, tip top shape. And now you don't just do that for OS engines, right? You do that for all, all brands of engines. Correct. Yeah. I mean, the piston sleeve resizing bearings, a lot of that stuff is fairly universal. As far as like the full rebuilds and repairs, it's mainly OS stuff just because that's what we race and have access to. Um, but yes, we can get parts for any engines and, and do that for, for pretty much any maker model as long as it's still a current engine where those parts are available cool now i think that's all i got for you i'll, okay. I'll keep i'll stop wasting your time uh no, thanks no, for no, no. Enjoy it. thanks for helping us out i'm sure uh, a lot of the guys on here really enjoyed all the information you got us uh, anything you can think of that we kind of missed out or you think we need to mention no i think i think that's pretty much it i mean if anyone has any questions you know they can message me on facebook email me direct um Pretty much anything engine or even if it's not for engines if it's setup help anything like that you know always willing to to lend a hand and try to help a fellow racer and um you know just trying to do my part and give back to the rc community awesome yeah we'll definitely leave your information down below so everybody can reach out to you and uh, get some help if need be great i appreciate it thank you so much yeah thanks adam